everybody, Mrs. Combs here, proud principal at Blue Ash Elementary School, and I'm hanging out here with Nigel. Everybody's gone for the day. It's just the two of us and this little guy, which is our friend Murray. He's one of the characters in the story that I'm reading today, Gary Park. And I am reading chapter 15, and the title is Yet Another Muckraker. There are muckrakers everywhere, mucking about in everyone's business, and Gooseberry Park certainly had its fair share, especially on the west side. It didn't take Kona long to find another weasel. And then this time, Kona had an advantage. This time, Kona had Murray. As Professor Albert and Kona walked toward the park the following morning, the little silver and black bat zipped around in the sky just above their heads. Occasionally, the bat faked a dive bomb straight for Kona's nose, which caused Kona to leap and went Professor Albert to shriek. What is that bat doing, Kona? Professor Albert cried, waving his arms wildly at the little figure in the sky. Kona knew exactly what that bat was doing, and he knew exactly what a good dog should do in such a case, though he really wasn't in the mood. But he stood tall, and he barked and barked and barked. Professor Albert was very proud. Murray was hysterical. However, the mischievous bat did keep a low profile for the rest of the walk. Then once Professor Albert was settled and reading, this time it was about snails, Murray flew down to join Kona, who was headed for the west side. Very funny, Murray, said Kona as he raced across the park. You thought so too, called the bat from the air. Oh, I was dying, dying. Kona gave a huff of disapproval and ran on. When they reached the infamous west side of Gooseberry Park, Murray did an, oh, that's just awful, routine. And sure enough, a weasel popped out of nowhere. Something going on, he said in a low voice. There certainly is, if you must know, answered the little bat, perching on a bush near Kona's head. This dog here says he knows the identity of a thief. A thief who stole a very valuable piece of jewelry from a friend of mine. And do you know what this dog wants me to pay him for the thief? Now, is that all you want? The weasel narrowed his weasley eyes, a common response among weasels, and said to Kona, Is that so? A dog's got to make a living, said Kona. The weasel nodded, looking shrewdly at the dog. What makes you think you know who the thief is? The weasel asked Kona. None of good business, said the dog. What's the piece of jewelry anyway? asked the weasel. None of your business again, said the dog. It's a glow-in-the-dark watch, said Murray. The weasel's eyes lit up. At once Kona could see that the weasel knew who had the watch. Kona finally believed it. Weasels knew everything. Now all Kona and Murray had to do was bait him. What's the dog's price? The weasel hissed to Murray. Egg rolls, answered the bat. Egg rolls, repeated the weasel. How many egg rolls? Six of them. Can you believe it? I told him three, three but, but no. no. He wants six. No wonder he's so fat. The little bat grinned as Kona gave him a sharp look. Six, huh? Said the weasel, thinking things over. He moved closer to where the bat perched and said quietly, Suppose I give you the information you want, and you give me five egg rolls. Five? Highway robbery! The weasel just smiled. You won't get the information anywhere else for less, he said. Oh, yeah? Just watch me. The little bat lifted to fly away. Three, shouted the weasel. Three egg rolls. The thought had him drooling. Murray perched again. Two, he said. I bring two, and you tell me who's going to watch. The weasel knew Murray had him. Any weasel in the park would probably sell the name for just one egg roll. Weasels had no scruples. And they were all so sick of eating mice. Deal, hissed the weasel. There they are. Kona, pretending to be ang angry at losing six egg rolls, glared at the weasel and trotted away, actually back to Southside where he would wait for Murray's return. 
the old professor had fallen asleep. Snails can be so tedious. By the time Murray finally came barreling back to Kona through the trees, Murray landed on the professor's head. Murray, Kona jumped up, be careful. Don't worry, said the bat. I have very delicate little feet. He can't feel a thing. Who has the watch? Kona asked. First, let me say that if I ever see another, another weasel again, it will be too soon. Who has it? I'm ashamed to tell you, the bat said, dropping his head. Who? said Kona. It's a disgrace, said the bat. Who? said Kona. And I want you to know that every family has a splashy sheet of the bat, and I'm not it. Who, Murray, who? cried the dog. My big fat cousin Ralph, answered the bat. What? Your cousin, Kona asked. Your cousin stole Stumpy's watch? Ralph the Mouth, we call him, eats all the time. If you think I'm bad, you should eat Ralph. But why did he steal Stumpy's watch? asked Kona. Oh, it's so tacky. Tacky, said Murray. Why? The light attracts moths, Murray answered. Ralph, who lives on the roof of Mally's department store, by the way, well, Ralph just sits there on the roof with the watch glowing every night and it's wide open. Isn't that disgusting? I can't understand who'd want a moth anyway with all the dumpsters in the world. Why, I found pepperoni pizzas, chicken nuggets, French toast with syrup, Murray, said Coney impatiently, forget Ralph's bad taste. You have to get that watch. Murray sighed. Boy, is my Aunt Olive going to be mad at me. Aunt Olive? Ralph's mother, she'll never speak to me again. If I take that watch, she probably thinks he won it in a poker game. I'll never speak to you again if you don't take it, said Kona. No more thank you to dinner Aunt Olive said Murray, shaking his head sadly. You have to, Kona said sternly. No more beet casseroles. You have to do it, Murray. No more mashed turnips. Murray, I'm not kidding. No more fried liver. Hey, wait a minute. I hate all that stuff. Yuck. Yes, oh yes, I'll get that watch. I will love getting that watch. Just watch me. <laughs> get it? Just watch me? Murray danced on Professor Albert's head. The old professor mumbled and shifted. Hurry, Murray, Kona urged. We need that watch by tonight. Stumpy will be running through the trees on Miller Street all evening. I'm sure of it. We need that watch. You've got it, said Murray. By supper time, by the way, is this lasagna night? Hurry, Kona implored. I'm off, the little bat said, leaping from the professor's head. Save me some garlic bread. Away the bat flew, a tiny speck in the sky. Kona watched him until he was out of sight. We've almost found you, Stump, the good dog whispered. Almost. And that is the end of Chapter 15, Gooseberry Park. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the book. Bye.